Hey everybody, Pumpkin here. So I know I haven't done a video in a while and mainly it's because I've been looking for a, a solid deck to bring to you guys for Squirtle. And the reality is I, I've put in several, maybe 10 hours or so looking for an Aldean deck, both on stream and off stream. And the reality is it, it doesn't exist or I just haven't stopped, uh, found it yet. Uh, maybe there's an Aldean deck out there, but from all the testing that I've done, it's just too gimmicky. Uh, it's too inconsistent. There's just not enough points. One of the biggest issues with an Aldean deck is, yes, it's very good uh, once you get to round three, but a lot of the times you can't get to round three. Uh, and that's because you have to play cards like Incinerating Trap um, or Nature's Gift. It, it just doesn't work out very well. Basically, Squiatel needs some taller removal. If Squiatel gets some taller removal in the future, that deck could work. Uh, also, if it gets some more traps in the March expansion, an Aldean deck could work. But as of now, right now, currently in this current meta, uh, Eldane sucks. So yeah, unfortunate, but it's just the reality. So um, I started testing some Bruver today, back to uh, some Bruver mid-range. Uh, we don't have Shiru anymore. I mean, Shiru still exists, but uh, if you've been playing Gwent at all, Shiru now um, kills himself when you proc him, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, so you can't really play Shiru anymore. Um, yeah, so I've been running Trap Squirtel in a Bruver deck, and it's been working <laughs> really, really well. It's really surprising. Um, yeah, so I'll run through the list pretty quickly. I actually have two different versions of this deck. There's this deck, which, as the title suggests, is, is greedy. Um, this uses cards like Unicorn and Kyronex, whereas the other deck, which I will show you in a moment, um, runs uh, a couple tutors for uh, consistency reasons. So, yeah. Bruver, very good with uh, your Crushing Trap. Crushing Trap is going to be the bread and butter of this deck. After two turns, so this card got buffed. It used to be after three turns, now it's two turns. Uh, it flips over and does two damage to one of your opponent's row, whichever has the most units. This card's insane. Um, this gets anywhere between like eight to like 16 value in round one. I, I guess you can get up to 18 value in a really long extended round. Um, so yeah, th this card allows you to win round one. If you don't draw this card in round one, it's going to be harder to win. And that's why the other deck uh, runs Avalok the Sage. And I actually like that other deck first. But because um, a lot of you might have Unicorn and Chironex from crafting them at some point because they were auto-included in every deck, uh, I thought I'd show this one first. So this is uh, a cheaper variant in that you probably already have Unicorn and Chironex, so you already have two of the legendaries. So this deck's really strong. Uh, you still use Uni and Cairo. Um, you use the unicorn on the immune dragon later on into round three. Yeah, they're just good enough. You play one of them every now and then it gets removed and the second one doesn't get value, but you're still playing an eight for nine, which is better than square tail gold cards. So that's fine. Uh, Geralt. So I've never been a fan of this card, but the reality is you have to play this now in square tail. You just have to, you don't really have a choice because professional got nerfed. The cards that professional killed, such as Azrael got changed. They you can't kill it anymore. Oswald goes to 11 or 14, uh, which is out of the three range. So yeah, you, you basically have to play Geralt. Scorch is too expensive outside of an Ethne deck, and there's no other tall removal because Urden is just bad. So yeah, we get to play Geralt now, which kind of sucks, but it's, you have to run it. If you don't run Geralt, you're going to lose to big monsters. So you got to play the card. Um, the other nice thing about Geralt, once people have become more familiar with Pitfall Trap, uh, they don't usually save their uh, win con for the very last card because normally you play like Pitfall Trap and then you are with Pitfall and then it kills the last two cards. A lot, of, a lot of the times they'll play it early. So an example would be like Dagger Herald. They might play it with like three cards or four cards left in hand. Um, and this can kind of screw up your Pitfall Trap unless you have tall removal. So the idea is no matter what order they go in, you can destroy their win con. You either destroy it with Geralt or you destroy it with Pitfall Trap. Uh, Malayan, solid removal. Roach, good thinning. Works very well with Witchers. Yorvith, this card works very well with traps. You get to replay traps. Uh, I just mentioned playing a Pitfall Trap and then Yorvith Pitfall. This isn't always the best thing to do. Um, it might seem like the most appealing, but you have to remember you have this card called Crushing Trap, and there are scenarios where Crushing Trap will get more value than Pitfall Trap. Uh, in the past, you couldn't really do this because it took three turns to flip, so you'd have to play it on turn six and turn three, and it's just too much time. But with Crushing Trap at two turns now, 
you can play a crushing trap with four cards left in hand and then replay it with two cards in hand with your fifth so yeah definitely think about it because more often than not your crushing trap is going to be getting like eight value right if they have four units you're getting eight value plus if you have brewer you can move a unit so keep that in mind a lot of the times in round three unless they're playing like a control oriented deck or like big monsters a good amount of the times you're going to be playing crushing trap twice so don't don't get into the mindset where you always play pitfall as your final like pitfall you are with pitfall like that's not necessarily the best option so um the matchups where this applies I, I guess it depends on the matchup basically you want to look and see how many units are on the row if you're getting like eight value on a crushing for replaying it it's probably going to be better value than pitfall this is obviously uh, contingent on whether or not that deck has a win con. So if they're playing big monsters like Woodlands with like Azrael or Ghouls or Spear Tips, like you should be playing Pitfall Trap multiple times because you, you need to be not denying those large units. Um, against SK, if it's like a Dagger Herald list, you're going to want Pitfall Trap for uh, Dagger. If you're playing a lot of units, which you're not really in this deck, I guess you would want to block Wild Boar of the Sea, but you don't play very many units in round three, so blocking Wild Boar of the Sea doesn't really matter. So against SK, most of the time, you're going to be playing Crushing Trap twice. Um, NR, Crushing Trap twice, unless it's an Ada deck with Hubert. So Meave Ada is running around, or sorry, Meave Hubert is running around. It's quite good. You play Hubert with uh, Blaze and Ockfist and then just a bunch of engines. Very strong. Um... So yeah, in that case, you would play Pitfall unless you have Geralt in your hand and you want the Geralt value. Uh, so that that's something you have to play by ear. So yeah, um, what other matchups? Squayatel, Squayatel, probably playing Crushing Trap. Yeah. And last faction, Nilfgaard. Nilfgaard probably also playing Crushing Trap because they don't really play giant units at the end of the game. Uh, usually they row stack and then play Horn. So like against Nilfgaard, they'll have maybe four, five, six units on a row your crushing trap is going to be getting 8, 10, 12 value. So yeah, depending on the matchup, it's going to determine whether or not you play uh, Pitfall or Crushing. So keep going through the list. Uh, Witchers, they're thinning. They're great tempo early on. They're still auto... Uh, not auto-include. They're included in any deck that needs the thinning, uh, where you need to find all your gold cards, which is exactly what this deck needs. Uh, Prince. So this isn't a very common card. You don't see this card every day, but it's really, really good in this deck. Um, the first thing that stands out is, well, Crushing Trap. So the downside of Prince, there's multiple downsides, but one of the downsides is you're giving your opponent two points. And generally, you don't want to give your opponents points. But if you're playing Crushing Trap, those points don't mean anything. Giving your opponent two points, well, you're, you're going to remove the points a turn later or two turns later. So uh, the points are an issue. So that's nice. So basically, Prince is just tutor gold out of your deck. Um the other downside of this card is you can't really play it in round one because you have no idea what you're pulling. You usually have anywhere between like two and like six gold cards left in your deck. So you can't really play this in round one, but this deck doesn't really struggle with round one because you have crushing traps. So I haven't had any issue there. The main purpose of this is just to find those final gold cards. This deck needs to find your immune dragon. This card is your, this is basically your only points in round three. Uh, everything else you're playing removal and then this needs to stay on the board and not get removed if this card gets removed you probably lose um <laughs> not always uh, against some sk decks if they play scorch you can uh, you can still win because they don't play very many units but yeah th this is your points your points are on this uh immune dragon so playing prince what i i found that playing prince is worth it so i like prince the consistency is nice I, I hate losing games because I don't draw this dragon. So, yeah. Prince is in the deck. Um, side note. Serpent Trap. You can play Serpent Trap. Uh, the other list I'm going to show you does run Serpent Trap. The reason it's not in this list is because... Actually, no. It should be in this deck. It 100% should be in this deck. Very simple. Sub Panther. Um, Serpent Trap has been finding good value in the other list. It'll find good value in this deck, too. Uh, against SK, it's good against Scorch. Uh, Nilfgaard, you can block Horn. Um, monsters, they have Nagflar sometimes, um, I'm going to blink on the card. The Wrath card, Amos Wrath, I think. Um, some, some decks play that. Um, NR plays Lacerate. So for the most part, Serpent Trap has been pretty good. I would say when you're mulliganing, never keep this card in your opening hand. You're never going to want to play it in round one. 
Um, unless you're bluffing, and you, you can bluff, but yeah, it's a little, it's a little more tricky. So I, I would save Serpent Trap for round three. Um, Prince, we discussed Crushing Trap. This card's phenomenal. Gets tons of value. Um, because there's no longer a three-turn timer, you can hold on to this as long as you want. Basically, when you play it, your opponent goes, and when it comes back to you, you can pass and it'll flip. So just keep in mind, keep counting points. Oh, if I move one unit with Bruver, there'll be six units. You're getting 12 value plus the Bruver proc, and you're getting 14 value with Crushing. So you just have to keep um, keep counting in your head once you start getting near that uh, the four uh, cards in your hand where points start mattering. So just keep that in mind. Uh, Brigade, it's only a one of but it's a nice win con with Bruver. Um, if you play Brigade and you use three Bruver procs on it, uh, you get six points from the Bruver and then you get six more points from Brigade. So it comes out to a 17 point play uh, with three Bruver procs, which is a lot, which is more than quite literally every single Squire Talk card uh, in terms of a win con. So Brigade's just a nice little extra potential win con um, if you're playing like a short round or you don't need the Bruver for crushing. So yeah, very strong. Sometimes I use this in round one to remove an engine. Uh, they'll play like a three or four point engine and I won't have any damage in my hand and I'll play the Brigade and then move it once with uh, Bruver and it'll kill the unit. Uh, I can one shot Milva, which is kind of cool, I guess, if you're playing against Squayatal. So yeah, I like the card as a one of in Bruver decks because, so I didn't like it before because you usually always use Bruver for Shiru, but now that you don't really play Shiru, uh, Brigade fits nicely. Sapper, this card's flex, you can drop it. Uh, I've been queuing into some SK, so I I've kept it in. Yeah, it's up to you. Archers, just solid card. Uh, Hawker support, uh, boost an ally by one if you control an artifact, boost by three instead. Uh, do note this counts um, tactical advantage. So if you lose coin flip and you're going first, um, I usually open with like witchers into a Hawker support because it's just a six point bronze, it's proactive, it's really nice. So keep that in mind. It does work on your tactical advantage. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be holding on to this for a while until you play like a Crushing Trap or whatever. Dragoon, very strong card. Works very well with Crushing Trap. Yeah. Elven Scout, um, this card almost is always good. It, it seems bad. You never want to play this early on. It's not like a Sword Master. You don't just dump it at the beginning of a round and hope it lives. No, no. You play this much later on into the round, maybe five, six cards in. So what I usually do is I play Crushing Trap and then I play Elven Scout. Um, if I think I need the extra points off of Crushing Trap and need to wait a turn and hope that my opponent plays into that row, I'll play the Elven Scout first and then Crushing, but there's a risk of them removing the Elven Scout. Um, so one of the things that trap decks do very well is like surprise damage. So if I have like tactical advantage on my side of the board and I haven't used it yet, um, I'll play a Crushing Trap. It'll go to my opponent's turn, and then I'll play Elven Scout. Elven Scout represents three, plus a two from uh, Crushing Trap, so five. Plus you use the TA, which is another five, so you're looking at ten right there. Uh, and then Crushing Trap on X targets. So, like, let's say you're hitting, I don't know, five units. It's a 20-point turn. Um, that's a lot of points. So, yeah, Crushing Trap, very strong card. Elven Scout, very strong in round one, even in round three, I usually throw it away in round three just because I'll be playing against a control deck and they usually die. But against a monster deck, I got I got this card up to 11. It was crazy. I just kept ticking. I think I played Crushing Trap, Crushing Trap, and then like a Pitfall, and then I picked up Crushing Trap again. So I played four traps and this card went up to 11. It was crazy. Uh, and for 4P, phenomenal card. Definitely play this card in a trap deck. It's just great. Every now and then it just goes crazy. So, yeah, good deck. Um, if I had to recommend a Squayatel deck, it would probably be this. Um, or the list that I'm about to show you. I might as well pull that up right now. Um, so that's the, the greedier variant. This is the more consistent variant. The only difference between this list and the other list is this list has Avalok the Sage and Mahakam Horn. I, uh, it messed up. I'll uh, refresh it. So Avalok Sage is, well, it allows you to pull out your artifacts, which in this case is traps. So like your Mahakam Horn Pitfall or Crushing Trap. So I mentioned a little earlier that Crushing Trap is your bread and butter. And it really is. This card allows you to secure round one because, I mean, the nature is you play units and your opponent plays units. Um, so every turn that goes on, you're getting an extra two points on crushing. So 
six turns in, you're looking at usually more than six units because they play cards like Witchers or they play like Burnant and Morkvarg into Skirmisher. They're, they're tutoring units onto the board. So Crushing Trap can get anywhere from like eight to like 16. I, I, I don't want to say 18. You can hit 18 value, but it's not very likely. I'd say eight to 16 value in round one, which is a ton for a bronze card that costs six. So yes, yeah, very, very strong card. The games that I was losing were the games where I did not find Crushing Trap in round one. And that's why I added Avalok the Sage to the deck. Uh, it's an expensive card, but securing round one is the most important thing you can do in, in a uh, trap deck. Because if you lose round one, your opponent will bleed you round two, and you'll lose. Because trap decks are pretty bad in short rounds. Uh, unless you have last say. If it's a short round three, you're okay. Assuming you don't have multiple crushing traps. Uh, crushing traps not very good in the short rounds. So yeah, I've locked the sage for uh, extra consistency on those crushing traps. And we throw in the Mahakam Horn just because uh, I don't really feel comfortable playing sage with two crushings and a pitfall uh, and serpent. So the horn's in there. It's nice points. It works well with the dragon. So yeah, this deck has Sage and Horn, and it doesn't have the Unicorn and Chironex. So your your point total is a little lower, but the consistency in round one is much higher, and I think that's worth it. So uh, it, it's really up to you. If you don't own Avalok the Sage, that's okay. You can play the Unicorn and Chironex version. Not a big deal. But if you do like that extra consistency, which I, I have always been a fan of consistent decks... Um, the Avalok the Sage really, really helps uh, along with Prince. I would say probably 85% of my games, I draw every gold card just because there's, I mean, you're already thinning your deck down to like six and the Prince kind of locks in the ability to find all your gold. So uh, yeah, uh, it's a really fun deck. I highly suggest you try if you've been looking for a Scoia'tael deck. The only other Scoia'tael deck that's been viable, I mean, I'll bring it up really, really quickly. I'm not going to go into the deck, but I will bring it. I will show it. Uh, it's an elf Scoia'tael deck. Basically, you play all elves, and then you have your win con is Scorch with Ethne. So if you're looking for a non Bruver Scoia'tael deck, um, I would recommend this one. You have a ton of tempo with Witchers and Roach. You can secure the round with cards like Isengrim and Call on Aelrin. So, uh, yeah. Take a look at this deck if you're looking for a non Bruver deck. Um, Elf Squatel, very strong. Uh, Scorches your finisher in round three. But, uh, yeah. I hope you guys enjoy the upcoming games. I think I'm going to show you two different games. Uh, one with each of the different variations of the deck, just so you have a general idea. They play very, very similarly. I mean, they're almost identical. It's just one has a little bit more consistency in round one. So, uh, yeah. I hope you guys enjoy the video, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Dude with the hair. Um, I can't remember his name. He's so bad. Uh, the guy who boosts the whole hand. He sucks. Um, Ethne, Ethne is, yeah, Philavandral. So Ethne is playable in a Scorch deck, that's it. So you can play a Scorch Elf deck, and that is the extent of it. Otherwise, you have to play Bruver. If you want to play non-elves, you have to play, you have to play Bruver. Because the other three leaders are just terrible at the moment. Kind of sucks, but whatever. Ooh, good old Woody. Uh, I need Witchers. Not that Witcher. No, no, no! Thank you. A bit of respect. You're not talking again. This is a really hard matchup. I don't actually know if we can win. We'll try. We'll try our hardest. Oi! Hi there! Come here! They can hide, but there is no escape. How do you make Phil and Eldain good? You give Skoyatel some actual gold cards. I 
Like, Eldain's actually a pretty decent leader if traps weren't so bad. The problem is there's, like, there's three good traps. Two crushing, one pitfall, and that's it. The incineratings are not good. Serpent trap breaks 50% of games. And what's the other trap? Horn's okay. The issue with Horn... Okay. So Horn could be good if you could prematurely flip it. If you could flip it and it boosts left and right by two, then Horn could be good. But they're not going to do that. Well, I mean, they could, I guess. But yeah, unless they do that, it's just pretty bad. For your best! We have to draw these or this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. If wait, 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 wait. If I have Pitfall on the board and they play a special and I play Prince Velen, does it deny the prince? It shouldn't, because it says destroy the next unit played by your opponent. Horn that buffs by two, both plus Aldane is literally less than regular horn. I'm fully aware that that's not the problem with the card. I just, you need that flexibility because sometimes you have nothing better to Yorvith and so getting four points is better than no points. Also, if you boost a unit, like let's say you boost a three point off, you have a higher chance of that card living. All right, we need to draw one of these two golds. Alright, so, alright, I guess it's not a big deal, it just kind of sucks. You shall taste of your own medicine. I believe I tried Pitfall plus Buy and it didn't proc. Okay, I mean it shouldn't based on the wording, but... Beta Squirtle didn't have a f strong finisher as well. Yeah, Squirtle almost never has good finishers. It's just like how Squirtle is played. Very, very rarely does Squirtle have strong finishers. Uh, Aglace was a strong finisher for a period of time. Um, Siri Nova was a strong finisher, but that's a neutral. What else is there? I guess Hattori into Barclay was decent. Oh, what is this nonsense? He just blue dream my... But... I feel like this guy didn't update his deck. I feel like he just came into the new patch and was like, Oh, we're gonna play monsters. Because nobody's been running Unikairo and yet this guy is still... Alright, let's see if we can... Death to all dwarf. Very nice. Saved a few points. Soul sisters, body soul. Gladiven Bort. <laughs> Shoot I'm all three cards, and they card left. Well done. Wrong order dance game. Yeah. You'll regret your mom ever squirted you out. I bet he's pretty sad that he threw away the throne round too. Oh 
I know what to do. Yes, a woodland now. This guy has the biggest balls I have ever seen. Like, if I play Pitfall, you lose on the spot. Uh, Somebody hold me back around. Meh. It would have been nice to, you know, have drawn this card. This card got insane value. All <laughs> fine bronze. The gamer's enough. Let's get to work. That is a scary ASCII. Very spooky. Someone ban that dude? That dude is a mod. I mean, we can ban mods, I guess. We've done it before. One. You stand before the Queen of Skellige. That's why I didn't want to move. Because there's a decent Stay chance that he goes front row. Alright, you, you play back row on Witchers, you hope that I move up for back row, and then you just stack front. Don't you pester me. With humans, a bite us. Please don't have artifact removal. Catch! Please don't have two artifact <laughs> removal! <laughs> Why would an SK deck run artifact removal? I don't know, you tell me. Good. Now I just need your bit. Oh, dude, we're popping. All right, Sapper, gold card. Pumpkin is happy. Go. What the? Oh yes, oh yes, so good. Everything, everything Pumpkin ever wanted.
Okay, I'm really liking Prince. He's cute. The, the, the extra consistency is nice. That way I, I don't have to baby rage. This deck is sacrificing so many provisions for consistency, it's probably wrong. Like, playing Avalok for consistency is just like, ugh. It's so expensive. Like, the deck already thins really aggressively. The fact, yeah, I don't know. Watch him throw it. No, we don't win. I mean, we have no unique Cairo. We don't have the boost. So, like, we could still easily lose. It's SK. I mean, shit, anything's possible. Okay. No. There's no way you play two artifact removal. There's not enough SK to warrant that. No! What? Is this a shoop deck? Wait. Oh. Oh. That's not good. He could kill this. <laughs> he could kill this. He could also kill this. That means I can't actually play this. That's really bad. I never miss. I can't actually play this card because shoop into kill a random unit or nine damage is ninety percent. Well played for a lot We should discard Shoop. Watch that be Shoop. Oh my gosh, it was Shoop. Because it doomed itself. His last... It was, I, right? Is there any other card in the game that's doomed? Is there any other... I mean, there are other cards that are doomed. Is there any other SK card that's doomed other than Markvarg? I don't think so. But I could be wrong. I've been I've been wrong before a few Just times. Gone. I will keep playing around shoot for another turn. How do you play this card in a shoop deck? Oh, that's why. Okay. I mean I guess it's kinda cute. I mean, you thin your deck to zero, and then you get to decoy your shoop. It's it's genius! Wow, that's a wow. Um, can you tell me what you think about this deck? Sure, more of in shoop. Um, I wouldn't suggest playing Blue Dream. You'll regret your mom ever squirted you out. That would be my suggestion. I don't think you should play Blue Dream. Shylar's okay as long as you're queuing into a decent amount of monsters. You're playing a side, you're playing a roach. It's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Some things cannot be forgiven. I mean, it's the correct play because that would have been my Geralt target. It's a good play by him. I'm so tired. I mean, there's no way he kills both of these. Oh no. Oh no. I don't want to bless the RNG. Stop, 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 stop! Shit. Oh. 
Oh, famous slash words. Shit. 